If you were to think about the best late game towers in Battles 2, you might come up with Super Monkey, of course, Ninja Alchemist is really strong, Spike Factory, and maybe some others, but one common tower nobody thinks about for late game is the Helicopter, which is actually extremely effective for a couple of reasons. The main reason why the Heli can be extremely effective late game, guys, is because of the Apache Dart Ship. And the Apache Dart Ship, guys, has a powerful machine gun that deals one damage, has nine pierce, and fires 20 times per second. The reason why it's going to be really good is because only dealing one damage but firing so quickly makes it pair really well with the Ice Tower and the Super Riddle, which will make it deal five damage instead of one damage. So today, we're going to be pairing those together with the Village as well, which will give us Homeland Defense on top of that with the strategy of Heli, Ice, Village, and Gwendolyn, and absolutely dominating late game. So let's hop right into it. Let's get it, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are on the map Star today, which is one of my favorite maps in the entire game. And we are against my man Master, who's starting with his uh, attack shooter in the back of the map. All right, let's start with my Gwendolyn right here. We are going the strategy today, or Science Gwendolyn. We are going the strategy today of Heli, Ice, and Village, which is actually a fantastic strategy, guys. I don't use this strategy enough for how good it actually is. So... We're going to start with our Science Gwendolyn right here, and we're going to heli down next. And the reason why this strategy is so good, I've used it on the channel a couple of times before, and you guys probably recognize it, is because the Apaches are actually extremely strong late game when given the buffs from like the Super Brittle uh, buffing its damage, and then you can obviously Homeland Defense buff it and whatnot. And then the Heli Ice is good for early game defense, and so it, it's, it's just a good combination. And the good thing about this map as well for the loadout is there's an unbelievable amount of heli spots on Star, so... If we do make it late game, we can spam so many helis, guys. It's it's going to be crazy. Opponents starting with their tax shooter, though, and their Highwayman Jericho. So, fair enough. Probably some sort of, like, tack mortar farm, tack wizard farm type of loadout. So, they most likely will be very aggressive towards me with those types of loadouts. So, we will have to be ready to defend rushes. It's going to be a big thing here. Let's get our um, quad darts up pretty soon, I think. Get our quadrilateral darts. All right. Quadrilateral darts has been bought. Perfect. They went for a farm on their side. That's fine. We're trying to keep on getting these rounds stole is going to be the biggest thing for me, I think. Making sure these rounds are stole to the max. Getting more money in my pocket and not um more money in my pocket is going to be a big thing for me. All right, they actually bought their blade shooter early. Look at that. Round four blade coming out. Normally, you don't get that guy until round five. So they're going to miss out on a couple farm upgrades because of that. I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with that move from Master. Maybe he's not actually a master, guys. Maybe the, their name is a lie. Maybe their name is a lie. Okay, let's start with the cocktail right in the intersection. Our heli is kind of chasing now, which isn't great. But I think what we'll do here against white balloons. We'll use cocktail. And I'll go for a second heli. Can I fit you? Can. Okay. Where was it? Oh, no. Okay, we got it. We got it. Two helis should be able to fend early game for me pretty well. This should be enough, I'd like to say. I'd like to think. Now, you might be wondering why I brought Science Gwendolyn, the blue-haired one, over the, like, Rider orange-haired one of normal Gwendolyn, because I normally do bring normal Gwendolyn. The reason I brought Science Gwendolyn with this specific loadout is because, um, Science Gwendolyn buffs your stuff less, but when you do apply buffs to it, it increases frozen damage, which is pretty useful when you have ice in your loadout. So, obviously, we'll be using defending with the ice a lot here. So having that increased frozen damage is going to be quite nice. Quite nice with the ice, you know what I'm saying, guys? All right, they got their mortar down. So just tack mortar farm, as I was kind of expecting earlier. Fair enough. 700 eco. Not bad at all. Oh. I tried to target my helis to, like, stole the round out, but I kind of just targeted them and leaked, which is not necessarily ideal. Okay, we're going to use cocktail here. Anti-camel cocktail, ladies and gentlemen. Anti-camel cocktail coming out from Ryan Mahalik. All is good. I do want to kind of just save up for that Razor Rotoring now. Razor Rotors has been bought, paid for. We're going to get up a Ice Tower right here. I'm actually going to sell my other heli. I don't need the other heli anymore. That's just to help me out survive early game. IFR. Okay, they're going to steal from me in round 11, which is going to be annoying. So I need to make sure I can afford this Ice Shards. I can Okay, I can afford the Ice Shards with the steal. We're fine. We're fine. We're good here. No complaints. Let's get the ice shards up. Keep eco going. Now, the plan against rushes is if they do rush me, I boost against the first rush. And boost will defend pretty much any rush they send me. Okay, that rush is not big enough to force a boost, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, okay. We actually almost died against the rush, though. 
The whole reason that rush actually got close is one, I didn't have a deep freeze on this, which I think helps out quite a bit. But two, the rush was timed so well that my like ice shards pretty just much just missed its two attacks almost fully. That rush was like timed almost perfectly. That was kind of crazy. But yeah, against a rush, I can defend pretty much any rush on a boost and then re-rushes, I get up Arctic Wind on this and I can use a uh, Gwendolyn Cocktail and that'll defend the re-rush, so. I've got, a, I've got a rush defensive plan that pretty much always works, so. That would be the plan. That would be the plan, but doesn't look like they're gonna get very... Oh, they are getting aggressive at me now. I think this would just defend this. Yeah, dude, look how much easier we defended that second rush. The first rush was so much smaller, but it was timed so much better that I like, got through my ice shards. That second rush, we just defended it so easily in comparison. That's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Obviously, though, we did have deep freeze for the second rush, which I think makes some sort of, sort of a difference. I'm still not completely sure on, like what the difference to the ice shards is when you have deep freeze versus no deep freeze but i've heard that it helps so i'm just gonna I'm just gonna trust i'm gonna trust okay if he sends me like moabs i probably just go for an embrittlement to be honest embrittlement will help me out quite a bit for moabs double my heli's damage in the range it's only 2800 dollars too the embrittle or 2700 the embrittlement's not that expensive anymore it used to be like three point something k but it's been buffed a little bit throughout through the days. They yeah, were good. Easy defense. And if they send me fortified mobs, I just get more helis down with them, Brittlement. But at the moment, doesn't see. Oh, nope, they are interested. Okay, how's this do? We use Cocktail as well. Oh, Cocktail was actually just not needed at all. Yeah, Embrittlement's definitely in the move against Moabs. You could say, oh, Ryan, go for a Mob Shove. Go for a Mob Shove. Well, the one thing is the Mob Shove does cost more than buying Embrittlement. It will work, but the problem with the Mob Shove is that if they send me a ton of Moabs, the Mob Shove will be pretty ineffective. But if they send me a ton of Moabs against an Embrittlement, the Embrittlement will still be quite good against a ton of Moabs. So that's why I decided on... um. The embrittlement over the mob shove. Mob shove definitely is an option there, but I think embrittlement's the better play, personally. Okay, we got a down dropped up now. Another fortified mob and a fortified BFB. Okay, now I think it's fortified BFB is a time we um buy embrittle buy mob shove. We'll see use cocktail here. Use cocktail. Yeah, we're good. Everything's going great for me. My eco's pretty strong. We're still on this BFB pretty well. We're actually pushing it back. Dang, the mob shove, I didn't know it actually, like, makes the BFB go backwards like that. That's actually pretty crazy. Just so many ZMGs. I went for a um, support Chinook on our side. We're chilling. I think I'm good here. Do I need to Firestorm this or no? I'll use Firestorm. Okay, they're sending me more. Mob shove. I think the plan against this is all I need to do is just stall these as long as humanly possible. And we will use, we will get up a, um, what's it called? Special operations against this. But just stalling it initially is going to be big. Okay, get Arctic Wind because he's sending me a million uh, region ceramics and stuff. Cold snap on it as well. How much all these sell for? I have 6k selling. We got like more than 10k. Okay. We got quite a bit of selling power. We're good. Okay, we need to get my mob shoved back. Select that. 8k, 8K ability. We're good. Dude, Special Poperations is such an underrated upgrade. I say this all the time when I use Heli. It gives you 8,000 per ability, which isn't bad. Obviously, just spamming Support Chinooks is more economically efficient, but the, like, Marine guy is so good against these, like, round 20 rushes with Heli because he defends Balloons pretty well. He has really, a lot of Pierce, and um, the biggest thing with him 
is that you can stole the top layers with like the mob shoves. So it maximizes his use really well. Okay, but am I fine here? Okay, I almost died. I almost died. All right. As I was talking about how good he was, I almost died. That would have been um quite unfortunate. I think one thing that was actually showcased in that defense. Okay, 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 okay. Focus. Marine defend. Okay, we're good. I think one thing that was really showcased in that defense there is the fact that the mob shove did not shove the ZMG as much as it used to. In the past, that would have been a really easy defense because the mob shove would have slowed down the ZMG even more. But they nerfed the mob shove recently where it slows down the ZMG less. And I think that made a pretty big difference in that defense there. But we're good now. We're fine, we're fine. Let's, let's bring this back a little bit. We'll just, we'll just farm on. Actually, let's move it down right here. Okay, we're good. All right, almost almost died against AI. That's fine. Keep collecting these. We'll stop heli farming. We'll get one more heli farm, and then I think I'll stop. Now, my heli farms and eco is obviously not very optimal here. Um, okay, they're sending me that. Let's just use, use a marine here. Marine and the and icicle and pale should be able to fend pretty much anything on these rounds. Let's move my Gwendolyn. Why am I Gwendolyn? That's not where I wanted my Gwendolyn, to be honest. Put it, like, right there. I wanted damage buffing these helis. Patchy dart ship. I wanted to see if I could defend a BAD, but I don't think they're sending me one. They might just die against AI here. I feel like I can I can defend a fortified bad, though, with our current setup. A couple of patchy dart ships and a, um, and a super brittle is pretty good. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next game. That was a fun one, dude. That was a fun one. All right, our next match of today's video, guys, is against It's Sour here on the map Sands Time, and they're starting with their, uh, what is that? Wizard right there. Yep, okay. And they brought Quincy as well, so I'm, ex I'm curious to see what loadout they're bringing with Wizard and Quincy, but I'm starting with my Science Gwendolyn. Same loadout as before. Different map, though. Now, Sands of Time and Star, both great maps for this loadout. I would probably say Star is a better map, um, just because you can fit probably double the amount of helis on Star at least, which obviously helps your super late game quite a bit, but most games don't hit those super late rounds to begin with, so that probably won't even make a difference here, but we'll see. Let's start with the Fireball Wizard as well. Fireball Wizard and Quincy should be able to fend quite a bit early game, and then I'm guessing they're probably going to upgrade that Fireball Wizard to a Wall of Fire later as well, so that'll probably work out pretty well for It's Sour. We're going to get our heli down here, though. Get our helicopter down. And, um, yeah, this time, though, I am going to experiment with a different defense early game. So, last game, you saw me go for the quad darts heli and then another heli to defend, like, white balloons and black balloons. This time, though, I think I'm going to try out... Oh, crap, why did I stop econ? I didn't mean to stop econ. This time, though, I think I'm going to try out an ice defense. So, like, I'll get my quad darts heli and then I'll get an ice down with, like, enhanced freeze or something right here. Which is roughly the same price as the before defense, but the advantage of this one is that I can upgrade my ice into an ice shards and I won't have to sell it later. So it's like, it's going to be better in the long run, right? Because I don't take any sell loss. So we'll see how this ends up playing out though. And if it ends up working out. All right, they got their wolf fire up as I was expecting. They use Quincy ability as well. Fair enough. Fair enough. No idea as to what their other tower is here. We just know it's, we just know wizard and Quincy in farm right now. But yeah, I think I'll get my ice down right here is going to be the plan. Because this will be my ice shards anyway. So I'm just going to buy upgrades early game that I'll build into an ice shards. Alright, round five. Send some greens. We'll get our ice down. We're going to get permafrost and enhanced freeze on this. We're going to tar- Uh, we'll just keep our cocktail target here. How well is this- How is this doing right now? Yeah, we are leaking a little bit. I can- I can trickle leak though. I, I just don't want to leak a ton. Trickle leaking is not bad. It seems like this is dealing okay with the balloons right now. It's doing its job somewhat. I think we might use Cocktail. Do I use Cocktail here? Let's use Cocktail. Let's use Cocktail. It'll kind of um help me out a little bit. I can just kind of cycle Cocktail with this defense too. To leak less. So I think with two helis, I definitely wouldn't be leaking as much as I am. But obviously you take the cell loss on the second heli. Um, 
So there's advantages. Oh, this actually looks bad now. They put Gwyndolin on first against Black Balloons. Yeah, Black Balloons were causing me... White Balloons were doing our, we were doing our right against Black Balloons. We were struggling a little bit. But with Gwyndolin on first, we might actually be dealing with Black Balloons pretty well. Let's see how this does. Gwyndolin on first against Blacks. Gwyndolin on last against Whites, I think is the move. Oh, they're actually going Bomb. It's Wizard Bomb Farm. Interesting. Interesting loadout here. Gotta say. We use Cocteau again. This actually, yeah, this actually worked out pretty well with Gwyndolin on first. But you wouldn't want to keep Gwyndolin on first against White Balloons, for example, because then uh, the White Balloons will kind of sneak by your ice, because you, the ice obviously doesn't hit the White Balloon layer, but it can't hit the Black Balloon layer, so that's why the targeting is kind of different, dependent on the balloon they're sending you there. And we'll put Gwyndolin back on last now that it has the burn effect available, though. We'll switch to targeting once again. All right, our eco is actually really good here. These rounds have gone stalled a lot. And we're not against Jericho like the previous match, so we obviously don't have to deal with uh, Jericho camos and the steals, which can be pretty um, damaging towards our eco. We're going to second ice right here. This second ice will be my um, Arctic win later on. I feel like this will be a pretty decent setup defensively. So far, they have no uh, inclination of rushing me, though. I don't even have a IFR on my heli, but I'm not really going to buy it, to be honest. Like, if they're not going to force it out of me, I'm just going to act like I have it and not have it. Save that $350, you know what I'm saying? Be a greedy Mahalik. They call me they call me greedy Mahalik, guys. They call me greedy Mahalik. All right, 1100 Eco is fantastic here. I like how I'm sitting right now. We just want to keep on stolen these rounds as much as possible. So I'm going to kind of keep my heli away from the action right now. Obviously, if they rush me, I will need to kind of bring my heli back, but... Right now, it's kind of fine just hovering around. They're farming on their side pretty well. They have a plantation and three times two zero zero farm, so it's pretty good. The one thing that is kind of unfortunate for me here is that they are kind of anti-stalling pretty well with their Necromancer. So, these rounds are going to be kind of short, which is going to limit my eco, obviously. So, I mean, I guess that's something we just kind of got to live with here. We just got to live with it. 1600 eco, though, so maybe they aren't anti-stalling very well. Well... The first couple rounds, at least, like the first 10 or 11 rounds before they got their Necromancer were pretty stalled. So that definitely um, helped me out in the eco. Because our eco right now is actually quite nice. Quite nice. Alright, if they send me that those Moab class, we're going to do the same thing we did last game, where we go for the embrittlement. Cost 2700 It's not even that expensive, yeah. I swear the embrittlement used to cost like 3400 or something. It used to be pretty expensive, so... I don't remember when they necessarily uh, price cut it so much, but I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it for sure. You know, I'm not complaining. All right, stolen the round out. Don't pop that red balloon. There we go. Round 18. They, this guy's a plantation. Oh my gosh, look at the plantations. This guy's part of the plantation nation. He's got four of them down. What? Okay, he finally goes for a marketplace. He switched up right when I right when I pointed it out, bro. He switched up on me. Like, what is that timing? I didn't even notice the plantation spam until now. Let's actually just let's keep our down draft just locked in place up here for now. And then if they do send me a rush, I'll switch it back to follow mouse. But I want to keep it locked in place because you can see it's just cycling the balloons at the top of the map over here, and that will in fact um stole the rounds pretty well for us, which is obviously what we want. We'll send them a little bit of zebras here towards the end of the round as well. Just stole the round even more. Yeah, look how long this round was. It's still not round 20. That's exactly what I'm talking about, guys. This round has still not hit round 20. That's still not... Now it hit round 20. That's exactly what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we're going to put this on follow mouse just for this round. So then I can blow back the insides of the Moab a little bit. We'll lock it back in place. All is good. And we'll start to use these heli crates. They actually built up molars on their side. Interesting. Alright. This guy is a farm spammer though. They have eight farms down. That is actually crazy how many farms this guy has placed. He is a farm spammer. A certified farm spammer, ladies and gentlemen. That's all good. Still no rushes from them, which is honestly surprising. Definitely thought they'd be somewhat aggressive in this matchup, to, based on the loadout 
uh, face off, but you know, I don't exactly know what their game plan is here. I like how we're sitting though. Our eco's good. We got two heli farms on the map. I like how it's looking at the moment. It'll probably be the last round I send zero blue Nico, and then I'll switch back to pinks. Collect those. Perfect. All right, we'll switch back to pinks now. We got another heli locked in place up here. 4,300 eco with three heli farms right now is actually fantastic pace. Just keep collecting these heli abilities when they come around. But yeah, as I said earlier, the one thing that I am a little bit worried about on this map, because I now have a feeling it's going to go pretty late, is the lack of heli space. You can fit a decent amount of helis on this map, don't get me wrong, but comparatively to Star, there's no competition. Star is just so many more, because on Star as well, you can freeze the entire water area and spam helis on that. You can kind of freeze the water on this map as well and get a couple more heli spots, but it's still... It's still not the same, you know? Just trying to fit these in as well as possible. Now, I do need to be careful about... What's it called? DTs, obviously. DTs, we almost choked against them last game. Those are... Those can be a pretty scary rush. So we'll get an embrittlement on our side, which will decamel them. And then our helis and everything can do better against them. And then we can get, we have a mob shove up. Probably good against like one or two. But if they send me a bunch, I'll need an icicle and pale. I'll actually move my farmer up at the top. All right, let's keep spamming these helis. Wait, that heli placement was awful. Get up better placed. Nice. Snowstorm right here. All right. We're going to go for a... This is where I'll have my super brittle late game. I like how we're looking with the placements of everything now. They got their two fifth tier farms on their side, so they're farming pretty well. But again, my eco in money is fan freak like absolutely fantastic this game. I have 6k plus eco and 12 heli farms, 13 heli farms, and 14 heli farms now on the map. Uh, I think I'll go for a 15th, and this is going to be the last one. That's all the heli farms I go for. And then we'll stop my eco pretty soon as well. Okay, we'll stop at 6,500 eco. 6,500 is a pretty good amount. There we go. Perfect. All right. So let's get our let's get a fifth tier Apache Prime right here. We're actually going to move my Gwendolyn over here. So it damage buffs these things over here. Nice. We'll get this two into Super Brittle. I feel like they're gonna rush me. Still no rush from them. We have a Comanche Commander on our side pretty soon. I still don't have an Icicle and Pale on our end. I just need to prepare for a late game now. So we can get two helis right here. One there, one there. I don't actually want to sell that. Okay. They're sending me that. Let's get a patchy right there. That is a fortified B BAD coming in. Great, that's level 17. We're going to save it for Icicle and Pale now. One Fortified BD should not be that bad for me. I don't think I need to boost or home on this. No, we're good. See, look at that. Yeah, it's pretty easy to defend. All we did was use Firestorm. Okay, yeah, sending me another one. Actually, multiple. Is it an embrittlement at the bottom here? Okay, yeah, they're sending me like an all out. Let's go for a homeland defense. Okay. Homeland defense and spam Apaches. We want to keep our Apaches kind of towards the bottom actually here. So they pierce through everything. It might seem weird, but keeping my Apaches ho hovered towards the bottom here is pretty huge. To make sure their pierce is used well. Wait. Oh, we almost died. We're good. Use it again. Homeland defense again. We're shredding. We're shredding. Firestorm boost. 
Dude, look at the shred. Oh my gosh, bro. It's all gone. That's actually so crazy. 962,000 pops on the Apache Prime. Most of these Apaches have like 200-ish thousand. This one, uh, Comanche Commander actually has 800,000 as well. Comanche Commander kind of went in there. I'm not going to lie. And we still have so many heli farms up. I could have built up even more Apache dart ships if I was quicker with it. That's the that's the thing about like defending with these loadouts, guys, is that you need you want to keep up your heli farms as long as possible, right? But then if they send you that old outrush, you need you want to have them sold at some point because you need to like build up your Apaches really quickly. You need to build up home and defense. You need to use your abilities. You need to boost. So sometimes pre-selling your heli farms and like preparing defense before they rush is not a bad idea because if you do it slow, you're kind of screwed, right? But obviously we're good at the end of the day there. And they're going to be dead against this BAD, 100%. So that was a fun one though, I'm not going to lie. That, defending with this loadout is always so fun. Definitely one of my favorite loadouts. I'm going to be using it a lot more on my channel. Okay, they'd sell everything. They're dead. We're just going to use boost. Homeland Defense, Firestorm, everything. Yeah. GG's. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, guys, please hit the like button down below and the subscribe button. Let's see if we can hit 500 likes on today's video and see if we can hit 50,000 subscribers before the summertime. I'd really appreciate that. But that's it for today. I'm Mike out. Peace, lads. Thank you guys so much for watching.